Hey everyone, it's Deja from CrochetEverAfter.com. Today we're going to make this owl washcloth, or cabled owl washcloth. Um, the requirements are in the pattern link below, so just click on the link and you can download the free pattern. Uh, we'll use a USJ hook or a 6mm hook for the medium worsted yarn that we're using. And this is 100% acrylic. It's Knit Picks worsted, uh, Bravo worsted, and Dove Heather. You can definitely also use 100% cotton if you're going to be using it for washcloth. Um, I just really like this color, so I wanted to make it in this color. And um, optional items are buttons if you want to put button eyes on your washcloth. But if you're going to be using it for actual washing, you may not want to have buttons on there. Totally up to you, but go ahead and get the pattern and the yarn and the hook and we'll all get started. Washcloth. So to begin, I'm going to just put a slip knot on my hook so we can begin our instructions. And the first instructions is to chain 31. So I'm going to go ahead and do a chain. This is a great um, project to do a foundation single crochet for your first row because the next row instructions is just single crocheting in every chain across. So if you know how to foundation single crochet, go ahead and do that and meet us on um, row 2 instructions and if not just keep chaining till you get to 31. Yeah, I've finished my 31 chains and I'm gonna go ahead and start with row 1 which is I'm going to turn and I'm gonna skip that first chain that is next to the loop that's on my hook so I can get the proper height for my single crochets and then I'm going to single crochet in every chain across for a total of 30 single crochets. So um, because we're putting an edging on this, it's totally up to you which loop you want to work into. You can work just in your back loop, or you can grab your back and bottom bump, or you can grab just your bottom bump. Totally up to you. Um, if you've done the foundation single crochet, you're going to meet up with us on the next row. I like to just grab the back loop because it's nice and fast to grab for me. I don't have to worry about if I've got that bottom bump. But if you are new to crocheting and need help with single crocheting, check out those videos. They go a lot slower. This is just basic single crocheting where you put your hook under the loop, yarn over and pull up that loop. You have two loops on your hook, yarn over again, and pull through both loops. So this is the easy part of our pattern because once we get into the cabling, that's when the fun begins. So if you've never cabled before, we're going to do that part really slowly so that you can see exactly where to put your hook. And um, if you've never cabled before, you should hopefully be able to still make this project by following along. So just finish row one, and we're going to meet up on row two so that the foundation and single crocheters can start up with us. I'm just doing the last two stitches of my first row. I'm going to have 30 total stitches um, in my washcloth. So I fit them all in there. Um, now our next row, row two, so if you're doing foundation single crochet, this is where you're going to meet up with us. But row two through row six are all exactly the same. We're just single crocheting back across, and this is giving us our border before we begin our owl. So we're going to chain one, and that's going to get us the proper height for our single crochets. And then we're just going to single crochet under both loops. So we don't skip any stitches, because we don't count that chain one as a stitch. So you're going to work right into your first V, as I like to call them, because they all look like the letter V. So find both loops, and begin your single crocheting back across for row two. So just continue single crocheting for round two through round six. I keep saying round. Row two through row six. Sorry about that. And we are going to meet up on row seven to begin our cables for our owls. So I will meet you back on row seven. Okay, I'm just finishing up the last couple of stitches of row six. Then we're going to start row 7, which is the beginning of our cables for our owl. So, our instructions say to turn and to chain one, just like every other row. And we're going to single crochet in the first 10 stitches. And this is just creating the 
um, kind of border around the owl. Okay, we've got my 10 single crochets complete, and now the pattern tells me that I'm going to skip my next two stitches. So this is going to look a little funny, um, but once the owl's complete, you're not even going to notice the hole. So I'm going to skip those next two stitches, and then I'm going to do three single crochets in the next three stitches of the row below. So I'm doing three single crochets. And you'll see that the stitch that I skipped is just a really long stitch. I kind of let it pull itself out a little. I don't want it I don't want to make it really tight and have my fabric pucker up, so just let it pull out so that it's running about the length of your skip stitches. Okay, now we're going to begin our cabling. So the instructions actually read front post treble crochet around two previous skip stitches of row below. So what that means is I'm going to come back to these two single crochets that we skipped and we're going to do our um, front post treble crochets around them. So first let's yarn over twice because that's what we do for a treble crochet. And now here comes the awkward part because we have to work backwards. We have to bring our hook all the way back over to those skip stitches. Now to f figure out which ones we're supposed to work into, what you do is you can look for your V's of the actual stitches. These are the two that we did not work into. You can kind of see the V's. Let me see if I can turn this better so you can see here's the V of the first one and here's the V of the second one. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in to the hole that we should have worked our single crochet into. So we're going to go in that hole and then we're going to come out the hole of the next stitch. So if you've never cabled before this can look very strange. Let me just pull out my hook and show you a little bit easier without the yarn. So we have those two stitches that we skipped. One and two. So to work the treble around our post of our single crochet. This is our post right in between the two holes. So we're going to go in the stitch that we skipped and out the second skip we stitched to catch that post. And notice the post is in the front. That's why it's called a front post treble crochet. So again I'm going to yarn over twice and then I'm going to come back over to that hole and go through it and then back out the next hole. So you're going to end up kind of folding your fabric to be able to get catch that post. Then I'm going to yarn over or lay over my yarn. See I kind of lay it straight over the top and I'm going to turn my hook to catch it and pull it through that post. So now I've caught my post and I have four loops on my hook. So now I can treble crochet just like normal. Yarn over pull through the first two loops. And I've got three left. I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to pull through the next two loops. Two left. Yarn over and pull through those last two. So now I have completed the first of the two front post treble crochets. I do treble because I'm traveling so far. When we're doing the straight cables we're going to be doing front post double crochets. But to keep our fabric nice and flat we want to do treble crochets here. So now we need to do one more. So what we're going to do is we're going to insert our hook in that hole that we came out of. So here's that last post that we caught. We went in this hole and out that hole. Now we're going to go in that hole that we came out of. And we're going to catch our next post. So here's our next post. So we go in and I'm just using my finger to help me guide out of that next post. Then I'm going to yarn over and pull through to catch that next post and then finish off my treble. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So you'll see that I now have those two posts caught. You can see them right here. With a single crochet the post is quite small. So it's just basically you're working in between those big holes that are in between each single crochet. We still have the two up here, or actually three that we worked into, 
that's going to be important on our next row because it's going to be a little difficult to see all those stitches that we have to work into. So make sure you stay tuned for that row also. So now that I've done the two front post treble crochets, we're going to go on to the next um, part of our instructions. And what we're doing is we're skipping our next three stitches. And we're going to do some more front post treble crochets. So now we're going to make the next two slanting treble crochets. So the best thing to do to skip the three, if it's a little confusing to look at it and say where am I supposed to start, is turn your work sideways and look for your V's, your stitches that you can see on top. So when you find the beginning of your V's, so here's my very first one, I want to skip three of these. So I'm going to go one, two, and three. Okay. So my next front post treble crochet is going to go into this stitch. It's going to go into the fourth stitch. So that's how you can figure out which one you need to catch. Yarn over twice. So again, we skip three. One, two, three. And then we're going to stick our hook. This one's a lot easier to see how to do. We stick our hook underneath the fourth stitch. So we catch both loops. Then we come out the very next stitch. So that very next stitch, I just kind of bend my fabric to be able to pop out through the front. Now I've caught my post. Then we're going to lay over our yarn and pull that through and finish off our treble crochet. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Okay, so now we just have one more front post treble crochet to finish off our cabling for this row. So we've got a big old gap, don't worry, we're going to fill that in in just a second. So yarn over twice again. Now what we need to do is go back in to that hole that we came out of. So if you need to, turn your work and find the next V. It's right there. But it's also the one that where we came out of to catch that post. So we go back into that one and then come out our very next one. So then we're going to yarn over and pull through. So now we have our four loops. Let's do our treble crochet. Yarn over, pull through the first two. Yarn over, pull through the next two. Yarn over, pull through the last two. Okay, so those three stitches that we skipped, we need to go back and work into them now. We need to put some single crochets. So the, the way that I find easiest to do this is turn my work and look for those V's again. So you can see I have those three V's. Those are the three I skipped. So I'm just going to work from behind. I'm going to go behind and catch it just like a normal stitch. Pull up my loop and do a single crochet. Then, because it's very like if I try to find my stitch going from the front of my work, it's really difficult. So I turn my work, find my next V right here, go under it, pull through. Then I'm going to find that third one and go through and pull. Now, because I worked front post treble crochets in those two stitches after the three that I skipped, I don't want to work into those two V's. I don't want to work into the two that I did my front post treble around. I'm skipping those two. So to find the third one, you can just turn your work again and look for the V's. So here's one V, two V, and three V. So the third V, I need to start the rest of my ten single crochets to finish off this row. It's also the stitch that we came out of to make our final front post treble. So we're going to go into that third V and just start doing our 10 single crochets to finish off this row. So wipe the sweat from your brow because I know that was a difficult row. And then we're going to work our way back across because that part is going to get a little confusing when we have to find all of the stitches that we need to work in right here. Thankfully, you have a video that you can watch. So, turn your work after you finish this row. And we're going to chain one. And we're going to go about ten more stitches across. And I'll get you right here in the middle so you can see how we catch all of our stitches. So here is row 8 and we've gone almost 10 stitches in. Now the fun part is 
following our single crochets around our post. So we're going to just go slowly. By the end of this row we should still have 30 stitches. So we need to work into every stitch that we made in the row before. And some of them are very small and turn sideways, so we need to be careful. So look at the top of your stitches. This is the best way to find where you need to work. Look for those V's here and you won't get lost. So we have our next V right here. I'm going to work under that. The one after, yeah, the one after this next one is kind of funny looking. So we have, we want to kind of ignore our front post that we have here and just look for those V's. So here's our next V. And then it starts to turn. This one is an actual V. It's just kind of turned sideways because of those front post treble crochets. So we still need to get under that one there. So it's kind of hanging out in the middle of nowhere. And then we look for our next one right here. These that are down here we don't want to work into. Those are the V's that we skip to make our front post treble crochets. We want to do our single crochets into our front post treble crochets. We don't want to leave those just hanging out. So we're going to work into these front post treble crochets. That one's a pretty easy one, nice and big. And at the end of this row, stop and count and make sure that you have 30 stitches because these little small sideways ones are very easy to miss. So go back if you don't have 30 right to the center section, center section, sorry, because it's probably where you lost one. And it's probably one of these little tiny sideways stitches. So right where those front posts end and begin are where those small ones are. So we're going to keep going across. Now I'm out of the woods. I'm back to regular single crocheting. And then we're going to start on row 9 where we're going to start building on our previous post stitches to start making our owl. So go ahead and finish this row turn your row and start your, um, I believe, 10, let's see, yeah, just do your 10 single crochets of the beginning. Of okay, so we are on row 9, and I've got the first 10 single crochets made. You can see how we have our two front post single, I'm sorry, front post, what are these, front post treble crochets made on each side of our L, and now we're going to start working are straight front post double crochets. So these are a little bit easier, but you still gotta pay attention. So now my instructions tell us to front post double crochet around the next two stitches of the row below. So just like with the treble crochet, you wanna you're gonna yarn over once instead of twice, but you wanna stick your hook in the next stitch you come to to begin working around the post. So you're gonna put your hook through that stitch and then you're going to come out the stitch after to catch that post. And then we're just going to yarn over and pull that through the post and finish our double crochet. So yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through the last two. So that's the first of our two front post double crochets made. Now to begin the second one, we're going to go back into that stitch that we came out of. Or turn your work and find your V, which is a little bit turned sideways. So here's our V. That's the one we want to go into. It's also the stitch we came out of to make the first front post double crochet. So I stick my hook through there and then I stick it back out through the next stitch again to catch our post. Lay over the yarn and pull through. And then yarn over and pull through the first two. Yarn over, pull through the second two. So now we've got the first two of our straight front posts made. So the next one is we're going to single crochet in our next stitch. Now we don't go over here to this next one that looks like it's the one we're supposed to go into when we're just looking straight on at our front post. We're actually going into the stitch that we came out of to make that last front post. Don't skip that stitch or otherwise you're going to be decreasing your work. So we've got to go under that V to make our single crochet. Now this is the fun part. This is where we get to work around our previous um, front post treble crochets. 
So it says to front post double crochet in the next four front post treble crochets of two rows below. And all that means is you're going to work around the post that you made. So it's a lot easier. You don't have to find these stitches or these posts. So you're going to yarn over once, go to that big post that you made, go right under it, yarn over and pull up a loop. Bring it close to where the word ends so you're not like connecting way down here and have a weird looking stitch. Yarn over, pull through the first two, yarn over, pull through the second two. That's your very first front post double around a front post triple. Again, yarn over, go around the next one. Nice and easy. They're very easy to work under. Do your next front post double crochet. Now we're going to work under the next two. So you yarn over once, catch that next one, and pull it up. Because these are double crochets and our base is single crochets, it gives us enough height that our fabric isn't all squished down. So you can see we did treble crochets for our diagonal stitches so that they lay nice and flat. And now we only need a double crochet to lay flat when we're doing vertical post, which is up and down post. So I am now finished with those four posts. My next instruction is kind of a repeat of these three. I'm going to single crochet and then I'm going to do two front post double crochets in my stitches again. So, oh, where do I insert my hook for my single crochet? That's what your V's come in handy for. Skip four of them. One, two, three, four. There's the four that we did for our front post double crochets and work into the fifth one. Super easy instead of trying to figure out what, where to stick your hook. So there's my single. Now we have our two front post double crochets. Again, go into your next stitch. Check your V if you can't find it easily. Go in through the next stitch and out, oops, in, and then out. <laughs> I keep losing it. Go in through the next stitch and out through the one after to catch your post. Pull up that loop, yarn over, pull through, and pull through. So there's one, and then we have one more. So remember, go back in the same spot you just came out of. Go in, and then back out the next stitch. That one was easier. Yarn over and pull up. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. We are done with our cabling for this row. Now we're just going to do 10 single crochets. But remember, do not skip that first single crochet. The stitch we just came out of. If you miss that, you're only going to have nine single crochets. So make sure you count at the end of every single row. That's going to be the best bet to make sure you don't miss a stitch. That's why I kind of made this a smaller project so you only have 30 stitches to count rather than some huge amount. So count, make sure that you have 30 at the end of this row. This row is a lot easier or the the next row is a lot easier to work in each stitch across than the row before because these straight front post double crochets don't make those weird turns that the front post treble crochets made. Okay, so we finished that row. So as you can see, when you're working back, you ignore the stitches that we skipped. We don't work into those. We work into the actual post stitching that's in front of it. So we're going to do 30 stitches back across. I'll start here and then we'll just go over this part together just to make sure you understand which stitches to work into. I'm so at math the beginning or the middle of all of my post stitching for row 9. So I just make sure that I'm going through the outer or the stitches that were actually made as post stitches. I want to work into those V's. I don't want to work into these skipped V's. These are the ones that we skipped when we made the post stitches. So we just ignore those and work into the post stitching. So I'm going, they're also a little bit higher so it's a little easier to see. And also the post stitch these kind of turn sideways and they point backwards so that kind of clues you in to hey don't work into these because they're not facing the right way so when you're looking look for the ones that are facing up and not facing towards you so we're gonna finish this row off turn our work 
rows 11 and 12 are just a repeat of 9 and 10, but I'm going to work you through the cabling again because it's a little bit different because we're working straight into these straight double crochets instead of the slanted treble crochets. So finish this row, turn your work, and do the first 10 single crochets of row 11, and then we will do the cabling in the middle. Okay, we are on row 11. I already did the 10 single crochets, now we're ready to do our cabling again. So our um, first instructions, we're going to front post double crochet around the two front post double crochets of two rows below. <laughs> so if this is a written pattern, it's quite confusing. Having the video is a lot easier to understand if you're not used to cabling. So all we're going to do is yarn over and go right through that post that we created two rows ago. So it's a lot easier to find than working into those stitches. So I'm just going to do another front post double crochet. And then my next one is also nice and easy. Just reach right through, yarn over, pull through, finish off that double crochet. Now I'm going to single crochet in my next stitch. Again, just turn it sideways if you have trouble. I do it still, just because I want to make sure I'm getting my hook in the right spot. I do it every time I do my cabling. One, two, those are the two that I just made in front post, so I skip them. And I'm going to single crochet in that next stitch. Now I'm going to work around those four front post double crochets that we did two rows ago. So yarn over, go right under there, pull up your loop, do your front post double crochet, yarn over, right under the next one, pull up, front post double crochet, two more of those. Make sure you're getting all the way under the post, don't try to grab the post right above it, that's going to give you a funny looking cable, get in between the, the meat of the post so that you catch the right part so everything looks consistent because it's kind of the same thickness throughout when you catch it. So I finish those four and I single crochet my next stitch so I'm going to turn my work again to find my V's so I make sure I get the right ones. I have one, two, three, four that I'm skipping and I'm working into the fifth V. So I just insert my hook, pull up the loop, single crochet. Then we're going to double crochet in those last two front post double crochets. I hope I said front post double crochet because that's what I meant. So I finish those two off and then I have ten single crochets to do to the end of my row. Make sure you're putting your hook in the right spot so just turn it sideways and find your third V. One, two, three. That's where you want to go in because you're skipping the two that you did the front post double crochets for. And then we're going to turn our work and work backwards for row 12. We're going to do 30 single crochets across. These are like the last row which is pretty easy to see where you're going to be placing your stitches. Just make sure you're on this front um, section of these that are attached to your front post stitches and none of these stitches that you skipped. So go ahead and finish this row and do row 12 and do the first 10 single crochets of row 13 and then we'll come back for the cabling. It's going to be just an exact repeat of this row that we just did but we'll go through it just to make sure that you're comfortable with it. So just do all the way through the first 10 of row 13. Okay, we're on row 13 and our owl head is finally starting to look kind of like a head. So I've done my 10 single crochets and now I'm just going to do my front post double crochets around the two that we had before. This should be more familiar to you now. We're going to work around those two. And a single crochet in our next stitch and you know what I like to do. So you can do that too if you want to. Look at your V's and find the correct placement. Then we're going to front post double crochet around those four of two rows below. Remember, go around the meat of the front post, so that nice big fat part. Don't catch the post of the row below.
Then we're going to single crochet again in the next stitch. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. Once you get really seasoned at cabling, you can kind of see where your hook's going to go, but I always still look just to make sure because that'll be the one time that I skip a stitch because I think I know where to put my hook. So I've got two front post double crochets. I'm skipping those two V's and working into my next one. And then I'm going to do my ten single crochets again. So we're going to work these last ten. Turn our work again. We're going to do single crochets all the way back across for row 14. Then row 15, we're going to start making the neck of the owl. This is the end of his head, and we're going to make the neck and shoulders kind of area with some more front post treble crochets. So that one's going to be a little easier than starting from scratch like we had to at the beginning, but you still probably want to watch it just to see where to place your hook. So go back across for row 14, and then do your first 10 for row 15, and then we'll make our owl, we'll begin our owl body after that. Okay, here we are on row 15, and I've got my first 10 single crochets made as usual. Now, we're kind of repeating what we did down here on row 7. We're going to skip our next two stitches, and we're going to single crochet in the three after. So we're going to... Just do our three. Remember, leave that first one kind of loose so you're not puckering your fabric. And then we're going to do two front bows trebles around these two here. So it's a little easier. We don't have to sit back and try to find those posts again. We can just go right around these previous. So yarn over twice and bring your hook backwards and around. I like to hold on to my loops so they don't get lost. And then I bring it right behind that post, lay over my yarn and pull up the loop around the post, and then I'm going to do my treble crochet. So I yarn over, pull through the first two, yarn over, pull through the next two, and yarn over and pull through the last two. And I'm just going to repeat that again around the next front post double crochet down here. So you yarn over twice, come back, hold on to your loops, come back around, make sure I get the right spot. Grab that front post, lay over your yarn and pull it up. So you can see that's a lot easier than trying to ferret out the spot that we needed down here. So now we have finished that first section. So we did our skip two, single crochets, now our front post trebles. Okay, so now we're finished those two. We're going to do our next two. Um, we're going to skip the next three stitches technically, but pretty much you're just working, you just worked around those first two front post double crochets, now you're going to work around those last two front post double crochets. So just yarn over twice and come around that first one, pull up your loop and finish off your treble crochet, and then do it one more time, double over Yarn over twice, not double over, and stick it through the next front post double. Pull up your loop and finish off your treble. Now we need to go back and do the single crochet in the three that we skipped. So the easiest way is turn your work and find that last V that wasn't worked into. Those are the three that we skipped, so we got to do three single crochets in those. So we kind of go work backwards. Put your hook under that first V, pull up your loop, single crochet, then the next one, I always turn it, find it easier to find the loops to work under, and two, and then three. Now we need to skip those next two that we did our front post trebles around, so use your V's, one, two, skip that, and single crochet in the third one just like our skip two from earlier just keep your loop kinda long so it doesn't pucker your fabric and then you're gonna finish your ten single crochets to the end of your row so we'll work back we'll do the back row together turn and do the first ten and 
we'll do the center part again because again we have those funny trebles that turn our stitches sideways. So we want to make sure we catch all of those so we don't lose any of our stitches. Okay, so I'm at the middle of row 16 and we have all those funny stitches that we need to work in again. We don't want to work in our skip stitches. Just go slow and look for those V's. And make sure that you have 30 stitches at the end of your row. So here's my next V. Kind of blocking that. Let me turn this a little easier. Here's my next V. This pattern is not for beginners unless you're really good at following this video. So here's my next V. That's the sideways one. So just get under both of those loops. My next V. So I'm not doing this for your sake. I am doing this so I don't miss any stitches because I still will miss some on this pattern. This cabling is a little bit difficult to make sure that everything is working out correctly. You gotta take it slow and make sure you're not missing anything. There's my next twisted B stitch. Another small one there. So I still count after each row to make sure that I have 30 because I will still miss a stitch. So keep on going, finish this row, turn and do your first 10 stitches. And then we will work row, what are we going to be on? Row 17? No, we are on row, what are we on? Yeah, we'll be on row 17. So let's meet up on row 17, 10 stitches in. Okay, we're on row 17, ready for some cabling. You can see our owl head is made. It's upside down, of course, because we're working from top to bottom. And this is just a repeat of row 9. So we're going to do the exact same stuff. We're not working around um, any previous front post double crochets at the beginning because we have to create some more. So we need to do two front post double crochets of the row below. So we're going to go into that next stitch like we did before and pop out the one after and be, and start our first front post double crochet then we're gonna go back in to that stitch we just popped out of and go in and then come out the next one yarn over pull that up and do our second front post double crochet then we're gonna single crochet so remember you can either skip two or just go right in that same stitch that you just popped out of from. Do your single crochet. And then this time we get to work into our front post treble crochets. So we're going to do four front post double crochets around our four front post treble crochets. So just reach all the way under there, yarn over, pull up, do one front post double, oops, just one yarn over. Two. Grab the next one for three and four. Again, we're going to single crochet, so I am going on my V's here. There is one, two, three, four. And then here's number five that I'm going to work into. And then I'm going to front post double crochet in the next two stitches. So go in the next one and out the one after. Yarn over, pull up, front post double, go back in that same one you just popped out of, pop out the next one. Notice these are the two that we skipped from the row before last. So you can kind of keep track of where you're at. And then we're just going to single crochet the last 10 stitches as normal. So I skip the two that I did and single crochet. So single crochet 10. Then I think you are good enough to work back across for row 18. And then row 19 will pick up and redo kind of the same stuff we've been doing, but we'll just 
go over it to make sure you got it down pat. Okay, we're on row 19, and this is going to be a repeat all the way through row 26. So row 19, we're repeating kind of what we did on row um, 11. And then you're just going to kind of do that all the way through row 26. So we're going to yarn over. Um, I've already done my 10 single crochets. Yarn over, do that front post double crochet around the front post double crochet. Then another front post double crochet. Then we're going to single crochet in our next stitch. Then we're going to do four front post double crochets around the previous ones. And this is making up the body of the owl. So this is going to make his belly and wings. So that's why we're going to be repeating it for quite a few rows. And I'm confident in everyone's ability to be able to do this on their own. So we're not going to keep coming back every row to just repeat this exact same process. Then I'm going to single crochet in my next stitch. One, two, three, four, five. Then front post double crochet around those last two. So all we're doing is just these front post double crochets straight up and down over the ones that we did two rows before. Then we're going to do our ten single crochets. Oops to the end, turn our work and do 30 single crochets for our wrong side rows. And you're going to repeat this process till you get to row 26. So row 26 is going to be a wrong side row where you're just doing single crochets across. Then we'll come back on row 27 so that we can make the owl's feet. And that'll be the last row of cabling. And then we just have to finish off the rest of our border and do our edging and we'll be done. So keep working and I'll meet you back on row 27. Okay, we are on row 27 now. Pretty much the whole owl is done. All we're going to do right now is kind of a repeat of row 15. And we're going to make his feet. So it's the same type of cabling as we've already done. Especially, it's pretty much just an exact repeat of this um, row right here where we did the slanted cabling. So to begin we're just going to chain one and single crochet ten times across again. After this row it's all single crochets so we're going to finish off the washcloth and then we're going to put the edging on it and the edging is going to be reverse single crochet so lots of single crochet left over after this row. So once I get my 10 single crochets, then we're going to get back into the last bit of cabling. So we do our 10, and then we're going to skip those two that we come to again. So we're going to skip those next two stitches, and then we're going to single crochet in the three after. So remember, keep that loop nice and loose so you don't pucker up your fabric. Do the three single crochets. Now we're going to go back to those two skipped, and this time we get to work around the post so it's nice and easy. And we're going to do two front post treble crochets. So yarn over twice, come back to that very first one, and go around the post. Pull up that loop, go through the first two loops, yarn over, go through the next two loops, yarn over, and the last two. All right. One post done, let's do the second, yarn over twice, go around the next one you come to, yarn over, pull up that loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. You can see that I keep my loops pretty close to my shaft size, and I have plenty of room to f make it all the way back up to the stitch height that I'm at. So what that means is, if you're finding that the posts are getting kind of scrunched down as you're making them, you might be um, doing the post a little tight. So just pull out your loops a little and it'll give your front post treble crochet more height so that it will extend further so you won't get any kind of scrunched down pattern. So if you find that your, your um, washcloth is a little scrunched where the post, the diagonal post stitches are, just pull out the loops a little and I'll show you what I mean when we do these right now. So I'm going to yarn over twice, 
and we're skipping th um, three single crochets and we're going to do our next two posts so when I say pull out just pull out the loop a little each time you make them and then you're going to get a higher stitch so you can see that this stitch is a lot longer than this one so if you're finding that you're having a little trouble keeping your pattern not scrunched up just pull those out a little and you'll get a little bit more height on your stitches especially the diagonal ones those can get a little scrunched down so I'm going to do another front post treble crochet around the second front post double and now we're going to work back those three single crochets so I'd like to turn my work and find that V reach through whoops I lost my loop did a slip stitch instead of a single crochet go. Pull through one single crochet, do two single crochets, and three. And then we're going to skip those two stitches just like on row 15. So here's one and two. We'll skip those two V's, work into the third V. Now our owl is complete. We're going to single crochet to the end of this row. Now let's pull this out a little so we can look at our owl. So he's all done. So we're, all we need to do now is just our rest of our border single crochets down below. So um, we're going to finish off row 27 and then row 28 through, let's see, through row 33 is going to be just single crocheting back and forth. So I think you've got down um, the special single crocheting that you need to do here. Just make sure you have 30 on the way back. Remember those little kind of small ones that turn sideways here. Don't forget those. Just make sure you have 30 after row 28 before you start doing the rest. And then go all the way to row 33 and then we'll start on the edging. So I'll meet you back on row 33 right at the end so we can do our reverse single crochet edging. Okay, I've finished all the way through row 33. My whole washcloth is done and all I need to do is put my edging on it. I'm going to do a reverse single crochet edging. I could just do, you know, single crochet around the entire thing, but I find that the reverse single crochet kind of helps it lay flatter. So this one's um, done already and it has the reverse single crochet. And you can see that it kind of stretches out my washcloth and helps it to lay flat. So this is without any blocking at all. I haven't blocked this at all. And you can see that it lays pretty much flat on its own. I can even push it down even further. If I just did regular single crochet, it's like adding another row. It's gonna still kind of flop around how this one is, how it's kind of curling in edges. So um, we're gonna do the reverse single crochet. You can definitely do single crochet if you want to, but um, if you like the look of the one that I just showed you, this is how we're gonna do it. So reverse single crochet just means that we're going backwards from left to right instead of right to left. So it's just um, working kind of um, upside down almost. So I'm just going to chain one to get my height and instead of turning my work I leave it as it is and I'm going to take my hook and move it so that I can get into the stitch, that very last stitch that I worked. So sometimes it's easier to hold on to your loop as you do this so that it doesn't fall off your hook when you're going to insert. So I insert under both loops just like I was doing a regular single crochet. And then I'm going to lay over my yarn so it's almost like you're kind of working the yarn into your hook to catch it. You don't want to yarn over or go backwards or anything, it's just kind of lay it to the left of your hook and let your hook grab it. So I turn down to grab it. Then I pull it back through my loop. The loop that I just pulled up stays on the left side just like a regular single crochet. Sometimes it wants to kind of pop over to the other side. Make sure it stays on the left because that's what's going to give you the loopy texture of the reverse single crochet. So just yarn over, turn your hook down so you can get through your loops easily and pull through. 
you'll the first stitch doesn't look like much you gotta get a couple more in so notice I grab that loop so I don't lose it and I'm going into that very next stitch so push through then just put your yarn to the left and move more center here move it to the left grab it pull it up keep it on the left of your previous loop yarn over and pull through notice I'm kind of grabbing my loops down here and it helps to keep them all the same size because the way that this is textured if you have different sized loops your your twists that you get are going to be different size so you want to kind of try to keep them all the same size so again I'm going to go under my next stitch lay to the left and grab it pull that up yarn over and pull through so you can see that my texture is starting to show up as I work through, I'm going to do them at regular speed so you can see how I kind of grab everything. I grab my loops so they don't move, then I grab them down here where they pull through the stitch and pull through. It kind of holds everything in place for me. So you can see now how that's starting to look. And you can see how it's kind of stretching my stitches out as far as they will go without overstretching them. I'm going to work across each stitch. I do one in every single stitch across and then we'll meet up at the edge so I can show you how to work the corner because the corner can be a little bit difficult. So keep going right to the edge and I'll meet you there. Okay, I'm right at my corner now. So this is the very last stitch of, um, or technically the very first stitch of row 33, but I'm going to make my corner in this stitch by doing three reverse single crochets in there. So when I do it, what, had it, what has a tendency to happen is your loops want to just start stacking up on each other. So if you just keep going right in the same spot, like if you're doing single crocheting that way, your single crochets kind of work themselves out. If you keep going in the same spot doing reverse single crochets, they just build on top of each other. So you have to kind of push them out of the way and actually move your hook over as you're going to get this corner to lay the correct way. So I kind of grab them and pull them to the side as I'm pulling my loop up. Oops, I just did a slip stitch there instead. So I kind of pull them over so that I make sure that all my loops are sitting to the right of the previous stitch. So I've got two and I'm going to do one more. So if you find that they're stacking on top of each other, this is what you need to do. You've got to kind of pull them off to the side to get that corner to work correctly. So once you get three in there, it's going to curve naturally so that you can start your next um, side. Now this side doesn't have any V-stitches. It's your, it's your edge of your rows. So you just want to kind of go evenly. And sometimes that will mean, because this is reverse single crochet, that you might want to spread it out even more than just one per row. So this row that we just worked into, we don't want to work another one because that third of the three counts as that one. So the next one I'm going to do is going to be technically going into row 32. So I'm going to pull up and do the same thing. And you just kind of want to catch the same amount of stitches as you go. So if you're catching one or two loops, um, keep that up all the way across the edge. If they start looking bunched up, then just pull them out and spread them out more. If they're looking too spread out and they're not, um, the loops don't look the same on both sides, pull them out and put a few more where it looks sparse. So just evenly, there's no really great tip for doing this is just kind of trial and error. I usually have to um, frog it a little bit when I'm doing it to get it to lay right. So um, that's just kind of the, you know, working edging is is kind of trial and error. So you're just going to keep working along um, until you like how it looks and then that bottom edge should be nice and easy because you're just going to work into each stitch again. And then you'll have one more funky edge on this side. So just work all the way around nice and even and remember three reverse single crochets in each corner for the turn and then we'll meet up to join off and fasten off our ends. going to do my last two. I've been um, crocheting in 
my original tail into this side. With the reverse single crocheting, like usually I like to weave in the ends, but the reverse single crochet, I've noticed that because of maybe the loops or whatever it is, my tails usually will stay in if I crochet them under. Plus it's got a different kind of texture, so it's not like it's going to make a bigger stitch that's sticking out because I crochet around that tail. So I do like to do that. I don't mind um, crocheting around it. So I'm at my last corner. Because I only did one in this very first stitch, and I've just finished one in the very last stitch, I need to do one to make my corner. So I'm making one extra stitch at the edge, or the very end of my round, to help make that corner. And then I'm just going to slip stitch wherever I can get that um, hook through, because you don't have the traditional um, V looking stitch. Just put it through and slip stitch to get it joined, and then you're going to fasten off. So I like to do a little chain and pull it long, and then cut it. And then I'm going to go ahead and um, weave in this end so that my washcloth will be completely finished. So I'm just going to go ahead and weave that in. It's a pretty basic weave. You can just go back and forth along the back of your work because you'll see that the cable looks a lot different on the wrong side. You have just kind of this lines where the owl is on the back side. So if you're wondering what that looks like, that's kind of what it should look like. And then of course the front has the owl. So let's weave this in and then we'll take a look at the finished product. Alright, I've got everything weaved in and it's all ready to go. Um, one thing you can do if you want, um, usually if it's a washcloth you're going to be using it somewhere that is gentle, or you want it to be gentle, so button eyes would be totally optional up to you, but you can put some buttons for the owl eyes if you really want to. I leave them off just because I like the look of the clean, just cabled owl. Um, but that is going to be your owl washcloth. If you have any questions, leave them below, and thank you for watching.